Many of the questions that we're going to look at in this parametric stuff involves finding different lines. And the important lines are things like chords, tangents, normals, those sorts of lines. So let's just look at the chords of a parabola. A chord, a word I guess we most uh, commonly associate with a circle, but it is no different. All it means is a line that's joined from one point on the circumference or the boundary of the shape, if you like, to another point. So it's exactly the same when we're talking about a parabola. So there's our standard one, x squared equals 4ay. We'll just pick some random point. We'll give it the parameter p, so 2ap, ap squared. And we're going to join it to another one, which will give the parameter q, 2aq, aq squared. And all the question really is, is find the equation of the line pq. So it is no different to basic, well, year 10 stuff really. But instead of using numbers, we've got a whole heap of algebra. And I guess that's why all that work we did earlier in the year on algebraic fractions and things like that becomes very important. So, all right, got to find the equation of the line. We need two things. We need a point. We need a slope. Let's find the slope. Slope of PQ. You might even recognise that question from the algebraic fraction questions. It's usually a common one in the different textbooks. Uh, but we can factorise, because before we do anything, remember, factorise first. So on the top, we've got a and the difference of two squares. Bottom, we've got a common factor of 2a, so the a's cancel. The p minus q cancels, and we end up with p plus q on 2. So this is one of the advantages, I guess, of using a parametric form. If we wanted to find the slope of a line now, all we need to know is the parameter of the two points. And we know, well, the uh, slope is going to be the average of the parameters in our parabola. We can't just quote that, however. They will want us to derive it. So p plus q on 2. Let's now put it into the point-slope formula and see what happens. Um, yeah, get rid of the fraction. So 2y minus 2ap squared. Notice I didn't bother expanding out the p plus qx because if you think about it, we're going to end up with the equation of the line, so we're going to group all the x's together anyway. So there's no point expanding the x's out, only in the next line to collect them again. So I left it with p plus qx. The, uh, the constants by themselves I did, however, because I do have constants on both sides, and you'll notice <coughs> the uh, minus 2ap squareds on both sides. That, that'll end up cancelling. So there it is. It's in a form that we don't normally see, because normally we're drummed into this idea when we're writing the equation of a line, we always write it either in general form or y equals mx plus b form, and I've done a mixture of the two there. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter, but uh, that's how we tend to see it. p plus qx minus 2y is 2apq. The reality is, if I had actual numbers, I probably would write it as y equals mx plus b, or in general form. Okay, a focal chord is a special type of chord. It's one that passes through the, the actual focus itself. So again, there's our standard parabola. There's our chord, but I'm saying, hey, it passes through the focus. Later on, when we look at all sorts of locus questions with parametrics, um, focal chord questions become quite important. If you see a focal chord question, they're usually trying to get us to prove a particular property, and that property is that uh, PQ equals negative 1. So the parameters multiply together to give negative 1. So in a focal chord question, I'd go and find my slope. I mean, we just did it in the last question, so I'm not going to redo it, but we'd end up showing it's uh, p plus q on 2. But because this is a focal chord, I could also say the slope of that line is ps. Or I could have q chosen qs for that matter. I mean, it doesn't matter which one I do. But if I do ps, then I end up with p squared minus 1 on 2p. But they're the same line. So those slopes must be equal. So if they're equal, I can equate them. p squared minus 1 on 2p must be the same as p plus q on 2. And I can rearrange that and come up with that relationship I was talking about, pq equals negative 1. So that's the way I do it if I don't know the equation of pq. If in a previous part I'd already uh, proven or found the equation of the chord, then it's even easier. Because all I have to do then is I can say, well, hang on, this line passes through the focus. So I'd find the equation, 
but it passes through the focus. So therefore, naught A lies on that line. So I can substitute naught A into the equation of the line. And if I substitute naught A into the equation, well, the P plus QX goes away altogether. And I end up with minus 2A is 2A PQ, PQ equals negative 1. So it depends. If I've already worked out the equation, then I'm going to do it the second way. If I haven't worked out the equation, I'm not going to bother with the equation. I'll just play around with the slopes and equate those. Ooh. 9E just plays around with finding equations of chords and what have you.